Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. North Dakota State has reached its final non-conference game for the 2023 season. The University of Central Arkansas, the former Sugar Bears, which is a great nickname. They're just the Bears just now. The Bears. Second straight Bear matchup. They had Maine last week. We still got Missouri State uh, to come. We'll get to UCA in just a second, Jeffrey, the Bison 2-0, two, two impressive wins at different ways. They did it against Eastern Washington, against Maine. The one constant, though, to me has been the Bison defense. This has been the Bison defense of old. Takeaways, big plays, big tackles we've seen in the first two games. Well, I, I think the Bison defense of old, Dom, I think it starts up front. Mm -hmm. That starts with really active defensive line play. It starts with the defensive tackles who are very disruptive. I think Eli Mostart has had a fantastic rebound from his injury last year. Will Mostar played very well last week. He was noticeable. Uh, had the Mostarts back, and I, I'm going to do my – that's the game day feature this week. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> that These guys, when they're together, I mean, they are just uh, – they're – they're they're different. It's dynamic. Uh, dynamic, whatever word yeah. you want to use. But uh, I just think when they're – I mean, that's all they've ever known yes. is to play football together. And so – um, and you, there's so many player names you could go to. I mean, Dutton Heffer has been really good. Dar Darrett Sutton, and we've been talking about those names yep. here now for, for two weeks. And, and so far, promising if you're a, a, a Bison defensive yep. fan, who, and that's really where it starts, right there. And it's opened up for the linebackers and the defensive backs to make plays, like we've seen, where we've seen interceptions and takeaways and, and tackles for loss because of the defensive line's been able to get pressure up front. Yeah, first time I've ever seen a six foot four safety <laughs> covering, <laughs> right, yeah. covering NTSC yep. football. And that's what you have in Cole Wisniewski, and he's just been the man on the spot. And it's not by accident. This guy's got nope. great instincts. He's, he's got the old, that they say, nose for the ball. He's smart. He's a 90 award yep. winner for the highest GPA. Twice over. Yeah. Twice at, at the yep. FCS National Title Games. And uh, so if, for him to adapt the way he has so quickly uh, has yep. been something else. And, again, that's six foot four frame. We may not see the last of that now with the NDSU defensive philosophy. I mean, Michael Tutsi was 5'10", 5'11". Yep. They've had a lot of safeties in the six, six foot mm. range. Even Chris Dudzik, you know. Uh, maybe I mean you got to have quicks right you got to be able to move if you've got the size but you've got to be able to move back there is this there. an NFL type maybe I mean that's that's it? certain that you can discuss and probably will be discussed depending on how his play he's goes he's got another year though if correct he if he so chooses back on the most starts they won a state championship playing together mm -hmm. at Lakeville North they came in together. They played as true freshmen together in 2019. Uh, I, I look back. We're going to show highlights of Will McElvain here in a second. Eli, really, that was his coming out party was that game at Northern Iowa in 2021. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. They, they, that's all they know, playing together, and they, they feed off one another, and certainly they love to to rib one another from the two I, the times I've got to know them. How yes. did Entz put it today in the press conference? <laughs> uh, they're two, of their, two of their biggest – fans and yes. yet they're two of their worst enemies yes. all rolled yes. into one or something like that knowing their parents we know their parents much well. respect yeah, there is definitely on that absolutely all right on to central arkansas and for bison fans they will know the quarterback of the bears will McElvain is the starter for uca from northern iowa spent three seasons with mark farley and the panthers actually played the bison twice in 2019 here in fargo in the spring season of 2021 he's not the biggest guy uh jeffrey but he can sling it he can move as well and he's uh, he's been up here before he played in the dome as i mentioned in 2019 listed at five foot nine when he's at northern iowa now he's five foot eleven <laughs> so obviously evidently grown two inches a uh, good arm very good quarterback in the throwing game not a big threat to run yeah not like the eastern uh washington quarterback who i thought you know had some had some legs to him will McElvain is more about getting the ball slinging it out uh, they're they're going to want to try to get you know some good three step press just like that yeah. three step passes yeah. or or whatever. If NDSU if, if you see Will McIlvain going to five step drops, then that's probably not a good thing no. for the Central Arkansas offense. No, and I'm intrigued to see how he has progressed. He was the starter for all their games last season. UCA had a difficult year uh, a season ago, not the, what they're expected to. They're in the new United Athletic Conference, which we'll get to in a second. But this is the era now of college football where there are guys that we've run into covering and obviously NDSU's run into playing against that you see at different spots. And here's one that I thought of Sunday night. Like, wait a minute, McIlvain is at Central Arkansas, and obviously well, we know him well. Now NDSU needs to play, uh, what, Cal Poly for Carson Camp or Zia Davis? <laughs> I can't remember. 
Uh, yes, Sacramento State. Sac, Sac State. State. Sac God, State. Yes. Somebody out there. It's one of the California how, schools. Again, how hard <laughs> is it to keep track of all these guys where they go? But yeah, Will McIlvain will be the key for NDSU, the defense, and and uh, you know he had a, he's had a few balls deflected this year, so you look for the Bison mm -hmm. defensive lineman to to try to get in his face and 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 try to distract him when he's thrown. This is an athletic team visiting with Nathan Brown, and we'll talk about UCA's uh, first trip to Fargo here in just a minute. They lost their opener 27-13 to Oklahoma State out of the Big 12. They beat a non-Division one team uh, last week, so I throw that one out. But you look at how they played against Oklahoma State, Colpac. They were in this game. Matt Eds told us at the press conference here not that long ago. I mean, they had a chance to take the opening drive down. Now, I know they didn't finish it off, but to hold a, a Big 12 team within two touchdowns in the season opener, that's what it, I mean, they've got some dudes. He was talking about the guys at defense. They've got some guys, David Walker being one of them, on the defensive end. Oh, look at this running back here. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 they got some athletes. That we know. And I think that's been always the case. Remember, when they came here in 2020, yep. it was the only game played that fall. Uh, they had some athletes. They had some good players on defense. They had a defensive back who intercepted Trey Lance yeah. for his only time in his, his college career. So they'll have speed and, and they'll have quickness. And NDSU is going to, if, if the Bison don't play well, yep. this game could go south. That's who are their leading rusher there, Sean Derek Powell, number 27, who comes in averaging 10 yards a carry uh, and Look two touchdowns. There. Wow. Uh, they, they have no problem. Uh, finding athletes and Nathan Brown's done a nice job with this program. You'll remember they were used to be in the Southland Conference. They won it in 2019. That was the year they ended up getting beat in the first round of the playoffs by Illinois State, that Redbirds team who came up to play NDSU. I fully expected actually that was going to be a, a quarterfinal game was NDSU and Central Arkansas. Now they have moved. You remember they went from the Southland to the Atlantic Sun and the WAC deal. Now that's the United Athletic Conference. It's almost and they'll be upset with me. That's like an Island of Misfit Toys kind of league. You've got the, oh, the Utah, the you've got the Utah schools in there. You've got Austin P Eastern Kentucky. You've got schools from all over the country, but they've invested in football. They want to be good in FCS football. I've, this game will be harder, I think, than many on the outside believe. I believe, I truly believe that on Saturday. Oh, I think you're you're spot on, Dom. Yeah. You know, I have been to Conway, Arkansas. Yeah. I went there in 1991 or two when Morehead State played uh, the. The, the Bears. The Sugar Bears then, right? Yeah. It was certainly the Sugar Bears then. I want to say the NAIA semifinals or maybe the quarters. I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, they, they were a, a very good football school back then. With, with And now they have, uh, uh, you know, there's some Division One talk with Central they Arkansas wanted to move FBS for, for a yes. while, or yep. for, for FBS. They, they wanted to move up to the top division. I don't know if that's been tabled. It's not just Scottie Pippen's alma mater anymore. <laughs> they, right. they have athletes that – that will play there. You alluded to the 2020 game, and immediately I thought of that as well this morning was how odd that was. I know you asked Matt Entz about it. I'm sure he really didn't want to probably get into too much detail because of, of all of that went into it. I remember, Jeff, that A, NDSU tried as hard as heck to play a full calendar that year. Central Arkansas did. They played eight football games, including coming up here. That's right. I remember – just a few days before, maybe the game not happening, they chopped attendance down from half the dome to just family and friends. It was one of the most odd football games I'll ever, ever remember. And actually, in my book, COVID Kids, yeah. I, I talk about this game. Yeah. And actually, it was debatable even hours yes. before the game I mean, whether they're going to play. It was uh, there's something to do with tests and yep. this and that, and and the team was here, and it, you had the Trey Lance, you had all the scouts yep. that were here. Dylan Radence was was really high on a lot of people's radar. Uh, it was just, uh, I, I really don't even prefer to think about yeah. it. You know, it was just that odd. I'm sure Entz was the same vote when he answered that when, question. When I asked him today, yeah, yeah, I asked him at the press conference, yeah. I, I think he was like, eh, I just really don't want to answer this. It is, and that game, remember, NDSU's coming in on their monster win streak. This was the only game they played. It was basically the Trey Lance showcase game uca didn't play that way they they led this game in the fourth quarter yeah it took two uh, uh touchdown passes to hunter lippy here yeah. running in but but he had a, or a couple touchdowns in the fourth quarter they were down 20 25 yeah. early in the fourth quarter now those guys are teammates of the dallas cowboys and lance and lipke there but just a, a strange strange day that uh, it's associated Let's with central arkansas we never have that again. just yeah. because of where we're at real quick before we wrap up as we get set for week three 
the big game, obviously, this past weekend with South Dakota State and Montana State. Your thoughts on where we're at now as a subdivision. Montana State played that game, I think, extremely tough. Uh, only lost to the Jacks by four. Does that change the, the gap in your mind between one, two, and, and three? Well, absolutely. How can it not? Mm. I mean, Montana State, the, the problem the Montana State, when they've come up to North Dakota State and South Dakota State or vice versa in Bozeman, is they've got blown out yeah. last uh, 2017 except for one game, which was a, a playoff game, South Dakota State at MSU. But otherwise, they've all been blowouts, and this was not a blowout. Montana State had its chances late in the game. Yeah and uh, had a starting quarterback, Tommy Malott, hurt in the fourth quarter. That may have factored in. But they showed me enough up front, and that's where I thought the difference was in past games with Montana. They were they were more even up front yes. in, the, in yes. the lines of scrimmage, and that's yep. really where they failed yep. in past years. The big game this weekend is between UND and Boise State. I'm really intrigued in this one, Cole Pack. Boise's 0-2. UND's playing with confidence. The last few FBS matchups the Fighting Hawks have had, they have hung with them, haven't been able to get over the hump. And Mountain West, Missouri Valley, especially middle of the pack is Boise's 0-2. I think upset alert is on is on in Boise this well, week. Well, really Boise that. is not the program no. it used to be. It, no. is, it is not the team that you saw highlights and, and national TV Correct. appearances and the blue turf and all that. Yeah, they still have the blue turf, but they don't have the athletes and the team that they've had in prior years. And in this game is going to be at 10 a.m. Mountain, yeah, local uh -huh. time, 11 a.m. Central time. That's perfect for UND. <laughs> Earlier, the better. Yep. I mean, get them while they're a little sleepy. Uh. UND is going to be way underestimated. Every time a, 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 a FCS team goes into these these places like Boise or Colorado State, they're like, who are these guys? Uh -huh. You know what? UND could very well yep. win this game. If they play well, certainly it's going to be a, an upset alert by halftime. Bison fans will be watching that before kickoff. They'll also be keeping an eye in Minneapolis. South Dakota State plays at Target Field Saturday against Drake. I think they're more interested in how many Jack fans are right. there as opposed to when the Bison were there. From last I heard, may not be 20,000 at Target Field either for when South Dakota State plays Saturday against Drake. But it's still good. I mean, it's still, you're still yeah, getting I mean, 20,000 yeah. in a in – a, and they had 19,000 at Dana J. Dykehouse on Saturday yeah, night. Get, so. Getting 20,000 in an FCS Stadium yeah. in a neutral site game. That's uh, pretty good. Give it up for South Dakota State yeah. or any FCS team like NDSU that can do that. Right. Because you look around the country and you look at attendance figures Correct. like we do at yes. FCS schools. Yep. Uh, nobody's even close yep. to that. Big week of coverage will continue. Jeff, Eric, Michael have stories all week long at Inforum.com. We as well at WDAY. Don't forget our Bison Media Zone show Wednesday, 1030 live on WDAY Extra. Leading into Central Arkansas and North Dakota State coming up Saturday for the Dome. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.